So this one fought back. Illustrations by Pete. So this is supposed to be the original video that I was going to use for how to use reference photos for abstract art and nothing worked out. It immediately fought me back and it was a disaster. You'll see here, but it's okay. I, I turned it into something else because sometimes things go terribly wrong and you have either one of two responses. Either you become defensive and you say, I'm done, I'm never going to do this ever again and throw everything that I own away. Or you immediately say, okay, I didn't get what I needed out of that. I've got to do another one. Let me try another one and see if that works. That's how I approach everything. If I want to do something and it turns out like garbage, my initial instinct is to then do it again better so that I can at least get out what I'm trying to get out and then I'll move on to something else. But I at least want to get done, accomplished what I'm trying to do. And it, it usually doesn't bother me. It bothered me in this one a little bit because I'm trying to get this out for you. I was trying to show you something, so that bothered me. But all in all, I just did another video two weeks ago. You saw that one. And in there, I'll link it down, up. I don't know. I'm just going to be somewhere. But you'll see it. And that's where I did the reference photo for the art. This one... It's a little different. It's about continuing. It's about pushing past when you do something that's terrible and horrible. And then I'm going to share with you a conversation that I overheard and one that I had. Both were terrible. So let's, uh, let's see how that goes. And a few of you have been asking me, where can you find my art? Now I have never, and I've mentioned this before, I've never sold, I've tried, never sold a print, an original, not even a sticker, but I'm getting that ready. So I'll put links below. I use Fine Art America now. I'm gonna use them, I think, because the quality of their stuff is just good. When you get something on canvas or you get something even on a paper print, it just looks nice. I'll also have the originals listed there through the site, when you say, yeah, I want the original, it'll send a message to me and then we'll have a conversation. All right, let's go see how frustrated I get with the nonsense that's about to happen. Okay, so what I did here was take four random pictures from the internet, just randomly, and I wanted to do something to make them, turn them into some kind of reference photo, put them together, and let's see what I could come up with. So this is what I came up with. And you can see all the different elements from the previous ones right there. And you can see the business end of the wildebeest and the flower with that thing on top with the blueberries and the background that I took and just kind of morphed it and swirled. This is just a reference. That's all this is, is a reference. That's what this video was supposed to be. It got out of hand very quickly. Okay, so like I said, this was supposed to be the original video that I was going to do using the reference photo. It got way out of hand. It just, I started it just like I do every other abstract drawing and, uh, or painting or however you want to look at that, but it just didn't work out the way that I wanted it to. And it got darker and darker and darker and kind of muddier. And then, I, I mean, I use darker colors. I use some granulating colors, and then I use that, that lunar black color in there, you'll see. It just makes it look gritty and dirty. And then I came up with the bright idea of, well, you know, I'm going to add some ink to this and see if that helps, and that did not help. And then I was going to add some markers. I don't know why that came to my head. There's already, the colors are mixing, they're not looking very well, the, they're starting to look muddy. I know, let me add another layer of a different medium, that just didn't make any sense. And it, if this was an acrylic piece, that would have been fine. You just add it on top, and it covers over, everything looks wonderful. Or if it was gouache, that would have been fine. But no, with watercolor, if it's already muddy, you're going to make it more muddy by adding more layers of other things. But I decided to go ahead and add the marker. To my surprise, some areas actually did get a little bit brighter. But for the most part, it just looked very, very ugly. So I decided, you know, this is this is where it, it works. This is where it happens. You can have multiple different reactions and 
I said I'm going to... I, I didn't get everything I needed to out of this drawing. It, I set out for a purpose. That purpose did not happen. I wanted to do something a little extra with this and it didn't work out for me. I didn't feel like I really got my creative energy out. So I said immediately, okay, toss this aside. Don't worry about it. There was a couple of things I actually did like about it, but not very much. So I said, okay, I'm going to, let me start and I'm going to do another one. I'll do it a little bit more me, a little bit more the way that I wanted to work. And I did, and I still didn't like it. But the second drawing that comes out here, I actually enjoyed doing, I enjoyed it a lot more. I like it a lot more. I think it came out a lot nicer, but that doesn't mean that the other one came out terrible. Look, anything you do is worth doing versus not doing. It's better to create something than not to create something. So if you create something and it looks like garbage, so what? Just do the next thing. Try not to have it control you where you decide, oh, you get so in your own head, I'm never going to do this again, and I don't want to deal with this. And just, just pull up your pants and do it the right way the second time. Do something else that makes you feel better about yourself the second time, or the third time, or maybe the tenth time. But one of the times, you'll end up with something that you like. The second one, I actually liked a lot more than the first one but it wasn't really what I wanted to do. But it, it served its purpose. The, the whole point of this was just to make a video to show you how to use a reference photo in abstract art. That was the whole purpose. So in both of the drawings I succeeded, it's just that one looks so ugly the whole time. It was terrible, I didn't enjoy it at all. And maybe a little, one or two little things that I did like, but most of the time I did not enjoy it. The second one I enjoyed a lot more, and I, I decided to just put the outline ink is fine, but then I only focused any kind of ink on the inside of the painting on the one object, which kind of draws your eyes to it, and the other stuff kind of sits back a little bit. So that's good. That's a, a something I wanted to accomplish anyway. I think it worked out. I just have to remember, you got to take your time. You got to go, you have to do one thing and then do, if it doesn't work out, just do it again. Do it something, and it doesn't even have to be the same one. I could have changed the picture and done something different and said, you know what, I really don't like this, didn't want anything to do with it anymore, change the picture. I could have done that, I didn't. I decided, no, I'm going to use the same picture because I like the reference photo. I thought it was interesting to look at. So if I can just convey some of that into this painting, I'll accomplish my goal and I encourage you to stick with something. It may not turn out the way you want. Don't worry about that. Just just complete it. You That means you did something versus not doing something, which is always better. You learn a little bit, even if you learn how much you suck and how much you don't like what you did. That's okay. It's okay to learn that. Once in a while, you have to self-criticize. That's okay. But don't get all up in your head where you're just defeated about it. Don't do that. So many artists do that. They just, they mess something up and they're like, they just feel so defeated because they put so much into it. And I get that. But change the way you think about that. Just understand everything is a practice. Even if you're making a, a permanent, solid, I'm gonna try and sell this kind of piece and it turns out like crap, It was that was just your practice. Just put that in your head. This is just practice. I'm going to do it again on this sheet over here. And we'll we'll do this over here and it'll work nicer over here. So I just want you to keep that in mind. Don't let this whole thing, you messed up, it defeats you. Sometimes art is tough. My art sometimes, it just, it grows legs and arms and punches me in the face. Just, it's okay. It's all right if it does that. Don't worry about it. You just wait till it's not looking and you stab it. But then don't, just move on to the next one. Now something I want to point out about this abstract art stuff. You know, if you've ever noticed, if you ever hear of an artist who say, especially look on YouTube and find artists who 
they try something completely different than they normally do. They normally do landscapes or they do characters or they do whatever they do. And all of a sudden they're like, you know what? I'm just going to do this weird fancy doodle thing. It's abstract. It doesn't have to be anything. They always do something like that. And then they're like, wow, I just, that was the greatest thing I've ever tried to do. Because they get to throw out the rule book and just create. Instead of trying to stay within rules that they've been taught and they're trying to, you know, do every little detail with their art perfect. They're just like, you know what, throw that out. I'm just going to create. I'm just going to put circles on a page or whatever they do. And they have the greatest time of their life. Here's what I say. Just do that then. If that's what brings you so much joy, just do that. When I started doing the abstract thing, I didn't really understand it at first. And then I started to get the hang of it and realize how freeing it is, how wonderful it is to do. And just to, to let yourself go a little bit. Just, I'm going to do nothing. Whatever comes out on this page is, that's the art right there. And so that's why I say, even this first drawing here, it doesn't matter. It's okay. It was better than doing nothing because I had fun doing it. I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy the piece after, but it was fun to create. I was just painting, listening to music. I think I was listening to music on this one and I was just relaxing and just in a groove. It doesn't matter that it came out like crap. The only thing that bothered me is that I was trying to illustrate something for you and it came out like crap. And I felt like I had failed in that area, but it, that I failed you, not me. I don't care what this looks like. It just, I had fun because I was painting. That's just what I do. I always have fun with art. If I'm doing it, I don't care what it ends up looking like. But, but when it comes to trying to show you something, I have a goal in mind and I'd like to accomplish that, but it doesn't matter when I create art, I have fun with it. And that's what I, I would just say, if you don't, do this kind of thing regularly just once in a while do it make it a part of your routine so you know what I'm, even if you do serious object stuff when you're normally painting do those things and then give this a shot do every other one just let yourself have some fun throw some paint on a page throw some ink on it and just see what you get and once in a while you'll come up with something you'll be like wow i really like that and you'll learn to like it more and more. And sometimes you may even end up preferring to do this over any other thing that you're doing. So it's just something I encourage you to try. Now, another good thing about this is when you use these reference photos, notice the reference photos that I used versus the end product that I had, it did not even look like anything. No one who took those pictures would say, hey, you're stealing my art. That's not what they would say. Or, hey, you know, you're stealing my photographs. You don't have permission to use them. They don't know what you use to create something this hideous. So it doesn't matter. It's not going to, they're not going to take credit for your garbage. So you don't have to worry about that. You just have to, okay, look, this is what I'm doing. It's a, it's an easy way to always have reference photos because you can go online get anything and turn it into something abstract and you don't have to it's not like oh again do i have your permission to and okay now if you're going to create the likeness of that thing of course you would have to ask i'm not saying you should steal anything from anyone but if you have ever read that steal like an artist book and i was under that assumption way before then you know, you basically can draw influence from anything as long as it doesn't replicate the art the, or the, you know, the photograph or whatever that someone else has done. But you use a similar principle or you use just what I did here, which is just mash everything together into a stew and then do that. Nobody understands and no one would ever say anywhere, hey, yes, you stole that from me. That look. That's my uh, wildebeest rear end that you just took and you put it. They don't know that that's what that is. There's no way that they know that. There's also no way that they realize that the blueberry pictures they took are those eyes there. There's, there's, there's no way. So you don't have to worry about that. It's just a benefit. It's an added benefit 
of doing art this way you you just have an unlimited resource of anything you can take in life and turn it into something and now I'm going to share with you a ridiculous experience that I had in a cafe so me and my wife just wanted to go out for breakfast we did we sat down we're having a decent day and it's just we're having fun we're just talking and the people directly behind me the guy had this voice it was deep and very strong and just carried across the whole place it was very he couldn't whisper if he tried he'd try to whisper and people would have to plug their ears it was terrible the guys but it was I, not, nothing against the gentleman he had a wonderful he should have been on the radio is what he should have done he had that strong voice but anyway he's sitting behind me the table next to me they're sitting there with they have their teenage daughter who's trying to pretend like no one in her family exists and she's sitting there and he starts he just starts a conversation with this family he leans over and says excuse me she looks like she could use a dad joke and I don't know if the actual dad was offended at all when he said that but they were just like oh yeah she's just you know she's just a little upset right now whatever but instead of just leaving her alone and saying oh okay I understand and just leaving it at that he starts yelling these jokes across the entire place it was the most obnoxious thing everybody in the place kept turning around looking why is this guy talking to the whole room he's like he's doing stand-up over here he just doesn't even need a microphone but it was terrible terrible jokes you would have never inflicted them on your worst enemy and here he was giving these these terrible jokes and the poor girl is starting to slump in her chair almost on the floor just trying to ignore everything that's happening she obviously is not in a good mood she wants to be left alone and the guy wouldn't leave her alone the whole time they were there the guy was talking to them and as soon as they they eventually got up and they left I don't know even know if they were done eating but they got up and left and then they started talking to someone else the guy just had to talk to people I I don't I definitely me I don't understand that I would prefer not to talk most of the time to anyone but he just you wouldn't know it from these videos I just ramble on like an idiot but that's how I am in real life I'm not a talker I just shut my mouth and I'll listen to what's happening but I don't usually inflict my nonsense on other people this gentleman did not have that that kind of thought he was gonna tell everyone how stupid he was and he just kept rambling about everything it was obnoxious as anything so then we get through this whole thing he finally gets up and leaves thank goodness I can hear myself eat again I could not hear myself chewing and sometimes I like that so I get to the front and I go to pay and I told my wife to stay on the table I had to go get change to leave a tip I want to leave a cash tip so I went up there and I was gonna pay and there's this other guy standing at the cash register just talking a mile a minute to the people working the cash register who are obviously running they're trying to get orders together because people are also doing takeouts and trying to get things organized and that trying not to pay attention to him is what they were doing and he turns over to me and he says come on you can come into this conversation we won't leave you out and I said no that's okay I, I don't want to be a part of the conversation I know that's rude I know that everybody always complains we've lost the art of communication and no I didn't lose it I just didn't want to have it so the, I just I just, oh no it's okay so he starts talking to me anyway what'd you eat I said breakfast it's breakfast time I ate breakfast he said well what, what kind of eggs do you like that that's not something you ask a stranger that you don't know while you're I if it turns out he's just sitting there waiting to get an order that he just placed and they were just trying to figure out how fast they can get it to him to get him out of here but he starts talking to me he's like, oh what do you like a western omelet or do you like like a spanish omelet or do you like a 
I, I'm just, I like food. I like omelets. I like breakfast food, any breakfast food. I like that. It was just, it was an awkward situation. I was very happy when he could leave and he was hovering over right where you go up to pay. So even though he wasn't paying, I was standing there like an idiot because I thought he was paying, not realizing what was going on because he was in front of the register. I had no room to get past him to pay the people. And so I could be on my way. And I get back to the table. My wife's like, what happened? Where, where'd you go? Did you have to go in the back and find someone to pay or what what happened and i had to explain the story about this lunatic who's up there i don't know what ha i think people were locked up for too long and they can't take it and they just have to get they have all this pent-up energy and conversation they have to get it out somewhere but i just want to let anyone know you don't have to try and get it out on me i just want to go and eat have some time with I'm spending time with my wife that's where I want that focus to be and that's it we're gonna go home then and or go about our day I think we we're going out that day we should stop there first and go about our day and just finish what we were doing and I don't need to have a perfect stranger just be dissected with my psychology of what I like to eat and why I like to eat it and listen to someone tell the worst jokes you've ever heard my goodness, it was just, it, it that morning just was crazy. I'm glad that was, I got it all out then. The rest of the day was beautiful. I had a wonderful day the rest of that day, but that time frame, it was obnoxious. It was just something to, to experience. But now I have, see, I say complain about it. I say how much I hate it, but I, now I have something to share with you. And that brings me joy. So I'm going to share all that stuff with you and talk nonstop incessantly about that and see how you handle it. So, so there's that. So the moral of this whole video is just keep going. Doing something is better than not doing something. And I wasn't going to release the video, but I did anyway, because I wanted to show you that it doesn't matter if you mess things up doesn't matter how bad it looks just let it go just keep doing what you're doing and just go on to the next thing and that's it and try and avoid weird people at cafes when you're trying to spend time with your family and they won't shut up and hey, once in a while it's okay if I was that little that young teenagers parents she's not a little girl but if, if I was a young teenagers parent I would have said you know can you just give us a minute here she's we're we're trying to do a family thing here and just move on with the subject so that he would stop and just stop harassing your family but no one from the table said that they fed his sickness and started talking to him like it mattered don't do that that's also a moral of this whole story so thumb up the video if you have ever experienced a lunatic like that who you're walking down the supermarket store and they just start talking to you and you can't get away from them because now they're following you while you're walking. They want to like have like a shopping buddy. And you, what you do is you walk close enough to the stacked cans that they either have to trip over them or break away from you for a second and you make an immediate left down the aisle so that when they get to the other side of the cans, you're gone. That's what you're supposed to do. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.